Welcome to Impact Farming, where we introduce you to the people and ideas that will have a massive impact on your farming operation. Brought to you by Farm Marketer. Sit down, start the engine, and let's roll with today's show. With an ever-increasing demand for potassium due to increasing crop yields, there is a need for a better source of potassium with improved availability and uptake potential. Alpine K-Tech is the most plant-available form of potassium and is able to enter the plant quickly and easily. As a foiler application, K-Tech is tank-mixable with many crop protection products, thereby increasing the grower's resource use efficiency. K-Tech offers balanced fertility and an added energy source for the plant. The latest development of premium crop nutrition is doing a lot more with a lot less for your crops. Learn more at www.alpinepfl.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Impact Farming Show. Today, I am so excited to have Elaine Fraze back. Welcome, Elaine. Glad to be here. How are you doing? Uh, crops are looking good. Got a million dollar rain last night, another half inch. Canola is blooming, flax is blooming, and people are doing summer projects. So we're very thankful. But I've also been doing a full week of coaching. It is July. But a lot of people are ready to have courageous conversations, so that's okay too. So I hear that life is good. Mm -hmm. Life is good. So I have Elaine joining us for two back-to-back, -back very, very exciting episodes. I am calling this the best of Elaine phrase. So we're going to do part one. No pressure, Elaine. <laughs> we're doing part one for transition planning. Secrets of Success for the Founders, and then we're going to launch episode two next week, and that is going to be geared towards generation two, which are the successors. And we wanted to take two separate episodes and really dive into what success is and what it takes to be successful when we're transition planning. And I know I have heard Elaine speak a million times already and what the founders need to hear and what the second generation needs to hear, two totally different things. And then there is some overlap. So I'm excited to do two dedicated episodes. Are you ready to dive in, Elaine, and speak to the founders uh, I am, Tracy, and I just want to preface this with um, when I'm working with farm founders, uh, the men and women who are typically age 57 plus, there's a, a tendency for the dad, the father, to sometimes feel beat up. And so I just want to preface this whole presentation with this is not about beating anybody up. What this is about is talking about the bull, here he is, in the middle of the room that nobody wants to talk about, but everybody knows that it's there. So the first thing I want to, to talk about is mindset and, and the intentional um, impact that you want to have through this process. Excellent. And so mindset to me means what you choose. You get out of bed every day, you're going to choose whether you're going to be a, a, a manager who's proactive and helpful and giving a learning plan to generation two, or you're going to be the kind of manager that says, you know, it's my way or it's the highway and I built this farm and I've been here for 40 years and you're just going to have to suck it up and wait till I decide that you can have some equity. Yeah. So anyway, what I, what I would like founders to understand is that they are really responsible for the culture of how that farm is. And culture is the glue that holds the family farm together. So it's what you believe to be true, what you believe – how you behave towards each other and also how you make decisions. So my mindset that I want founders, the husbands and wives to have is that I want them to be open to possibility and I don't want them to prejudge the outcome. And I also need them to understand that succession or transition planning is a journey. And uh, I've got a picture of the gleaners behind me here in my office. And this picture is very special to me because it was in my grandmother's kitchen and it speaks to, you know, picking up what's left behind and being diligent in the work and making sure the harvest is well, well done. But when people look at this picture, they go, oh, man, am I ever glad we don't have to harvest by hand anymore? And, and there is another mindset problem is there's different ways of doing things, right? And so Generation One, the founders, is very secure in how things are done, but they also have to be open to new possibilities. 
Yeah, that is a very good point, Elaine. So I know you always talk about mindset and I'm glad that you started there. A quote I heard one time, I want to share it with you, Elaine. It's a Tony Robbins quote, pardon me. And I think it sounds so true. He says that business is 80% psychology, so mindset, and 20% strategy. And I think that probably peels right over to farm business, just the same. And I would almost guess transition planning, right? Well, and that's why, you know, my, my online course, Get Farm Transition, Farm Transition Unstuck, is, is about the emotional factors affecting planning. Because you'll hear accountants sometimes say, or farmers say, oh, let's not, let's not get touchy-feely here. <laughs> touchy-feely. Okay. Yeah. But, but let's talk about what do, you, what do you really want? What are your true feelings? And so I also want founders to be successful by having a learner mindset, not a judger one. And, and that comes from the work of Marilee Adams and her book called Change Your Questions, Change Your Life. So what are you responsible for and what choices are you making? So when I wake up in the morning, I expect it to be a really good day. And I always ask my husband, okay, what's the plan for the day? So I get a big picture view of what's going on in our farm. But I'm not going to prejudge things. And, and I think that, that that would be really helpful. The other thing I also want the mindset to encompass is I want – farmers to embrace a fair exchange of value in how they build their team of advisors, Tracy, okay. because there's another mindset shift that needs to happen. And that's, I don't want to pay tax. Just show me how to save tax. That's like way down the transition planning process. That's not at the top of the funnel. And if you're not paying tax, that's a bad thing because that means you're not profitable and you're not making money and you can't beat the tax man. You have to face that issue too. So, there's the whole thing about doing discovery calls and, and finding out who the best fit for your trusted advisor would be and also being willing to pay for that advice and pay for a fair exchange of value. And then the other thing is, is not using emotional blackmail. Like I have young farmers to say, Elaine, I called you today because my dad said he's ready to sell the farm. And that's emotional blackmail. That's not fair. That's a threat. And so we need to settle down and we need to take, some time to explore and discover what it is that generation one, the founders really want. Okay. So mindset is your first pillar and then explore is pillar two that you like to go into, right? Explore. Right. So explore is my three C's. So certainty of, of expect or clarity, sorry. Brenny Brown says being clear is kind and, I just did a coaching call yesterday with a young farmer who's highly striving, create a sense of urgency, but he also has a fear of failure. And what he's discovering is that Brené Brown's books are helpful to him. So he's ordering them to do, be them uh, as audiobooks. Excellent. Being clear is kind. And so the, the first C is clarity of expectation. So when I ask a founder, what does a good day on the farm look like to you? Very often he'll say, or she'll say, well, Lane, I don't know. I've never really thought about it precisely. Mm -hmm. So this whole exploring process is, I say, counseling is about recovery, but coaching is about discovery. It's what do you want in your 60s? What do you want in your 70s? What do you want in your 80s? You know, Tracy, this spring I had a guy call me. He was 86 years old. And my oldest client died on me. He was 96. And I only he's only my client for three months. So that's a whole other story. But the, the whole point is, is that whatever age and stage you are, and I just wrote a blog on this, it's important to pay attention that in your 60s, it's about letting go and starting over again. And letting go is a very scary word to people who really like to have power and control because they know how this farm is supposed to run, right? Yeah. <laughs> so there's that whole letting go thing. And then, and then, then you're, there's the spouses. So you talk about succession success for Gen 1. What does dad want on this hand, but what does mom want on this hand? And sometimes it's not the same thing. So I have another couple I'm coaching right now where she takes off for Mexico or the South for six weeks of the year. He, may, he max, will go for two. Okay. But she's found out that if she wants the life she's always wanted, some of that's not going to include being with her husband because he's just not willing to go there. And so, okay. This, my book. Yeah. 
Well, right. But, and so a helpful phrase when you're trying to have those conversations is, where is it written that farm women cannot travel with their sisters or their best friend? Love right? it. So when you, use the pair, when you use the preface, where is it written? So where is it written that farmers have to retire? So there's another exploration. Are you going to retire? No way, man. I'm never going to retire. I'm dying here with my boots on. Oh, okay. Now we're clear. There is no retirement plan. It's a change of roles. And so how these bodies are aging. So now we have a 70-year-old farmer. He's just finally getting around to doing a transition plan. What does a good day on the farm look like to you? And what do you want your role to be? And typically they will say to me, Elaine, I just want to work when I feel like working and not show up for work when I don't feel like working. Fine. But for the farmers who are into micromanaging, always being on top of the situation, that's a very difficult thing because they can't stand letting go of having someone else be the main decision maker. Yeah. So there again is another exploration. Who is the ultimate decision maker on this farm? And when is that going to transition to Gen 2? Excellent. I love that sentence. Being clear is kind. Mm-hmm. You know, I think often people feel like avoiding confrontation or conversation makes it easier, right? Then we don't have to fight. Then we don't have to have those hard conversations. But how much trauma and anger and frustration are people creating, thinking maybe that they're doing a good thing, where if we were all clear with each other, that is the kindest thing we can do. Oh, dad, you're not retiring? You're not selling me the farm? Okay, we'll go and start buying our own property. Right, or else we'll start leveraging different pieces of equity, say like the equipment or something, right? Yeah. And I, I, use, I use this Beanie Baby Bowl. Many people know this is part of my shtick kind of thing. But I did a webinar yesterday, and, and someone said, explain to me how this works. And, and the talking stick principle is, is that when you hold the bowl in a family meeting, you get to talk and share your opinions. The problem is, Tracy, is a lot of people in Gen 1 – I've never really thought about what they feel or what they want. And so I do have a a handout called, what do I want? And I I just really want people to think about what roles will fill them up and and give them energy and meaning and purpose on the farm. And how that relates to Gen 2 for Gen 1 is learning plan. Because a founder's biggest fear is number one, fear of failure. I have worked 40 years. This is our 43rd crop we're putting in this year. So my husband's been managing this farm since he's 22. And there's a lot of bins in our yard and we're doing a new seed plant this summer and there's corn dryers and there's road construction. There's always stuff going on, right? There's projects happening. And that's all well and fine. But what is the plan from Gen 1 to, to mentor and help a learning plan for Gen 2 so that you don't have to have that fail of fear of failure? And I would say... It's financial transparency and farming your numbers and having these open conversations so that some of your meetings are strategic for the succession plan and some of your meetings are actually operational so that you're communicating. Mm. And so, you know, that's kind of the next place I want to move to is communication, communication, communication at all different ways and levels. I love that. And you know what? I think communication, and you know better than I do, Elaine, you have, you have been sitting at farm tables and having Zoom meetings with farmers for how many years now? You spoke to how many farmers? I'm going to guess communication might be one of the big issues on a lot of transitions. Is that it's, a good it's, 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 yeah, when I, when I ask people in my coaching profile what's their main desire for coaching, very often – Um, it's communication. And the other, the other issue with that, the other problem, and I'll hold these up, this stands for the family. So it's red, like a heart. This is green, like money. So this is the farm business. So these are the two of the circles. The three circles are the family circle, the business circle, and then the other circle would be the wealth circle. And if you can just understand that, you know, I, I'm working, I'm working a lot this week. I don't know. I don't know what was in the water, but you know, there's a lot of families right now that are just, up to here. And, and the other problem is, is that generation two is getting so frustrated, Tracy, that they're starting to read books by Dr. Henry Cloud called Necessary Endings. And so they say, well, Elaine, I do have options, don't I? And I go, yes, you do. 
And that means they're this close, like they're getting really close to, to just saying, I'm done. Yeah. And I'm not telling a sad story. I'm just being a reality checker here. So the communication, you can't make assumptions. And here's another good phrase that pays. Love does not read minds. Mm. So don't make assumptions. Ask better questions. Do you know what the books look like? Do you know how, far, how many farm families this, this farm can support? And you see, therein lies another secret of success for founders. I'm sending them all to financial planners, Tracy, because I want them to build up a personal wealth bubble or have a plan for where their income stream is going to come from for the next 20 to 30 years. If they're 60, that's 30 years they need to plan for, right? Going out. And, and I did a little visual for you here. I just got, I have these three questions. You can see it. Income stream, home yard, and fairness. So I'm just gonna leave that on for a second because I really want families to think about where is your income coming from? Who's living on the home yard, which means either house is gonna have to be built somewhere else or this house is gonna have to be renovated. And then the third one is fairness. And, and you know, it, it, it warmed my heart. Terry Weiss is um, a financial planner from Saskatchewan in, in CAF. I belong to the Canadian Association of Farm Advisors, which everybody should know about. It's cafanet.com on the web. Terry said the exact same three questions. And I went, good, someone else sees the world the way I do because I don't want to make this more complicated. And I think one of the pushbacks of getting this done, which is why I say procrastination is killing agriculture, the pushback is coming because people don't know where to start and yep. they're so overwhelmed, right? And so all you need to understand is, first of all, get that financial transparency with your spouse and with a financial planner and with your accountant and figure out how much money do we need to take from the farm and does it need to keep popping out in cash flow and how much money do we have from other things like RASPs, RSPs, um, tax-free savings accounts. I mean, I'm still meeting farmers who don't know about tax-free savings accounts and I go, where have you been? obviously not paying attention to your finances, right? Yeah. So that would be another thing that I would really highly adv advise is to get that. And then when you look at the housing issues, if you want to have success, if you're the mother-in-law, because if she, the daughter-in-law, is moving into your house, it's no longer your house. It's her house. Yes, and, you know, we, we, painted, we painted this house blue in 1991, and my father-in-law had a fit. He said, this house isn't supposed to be blue. And my husband said, where is it written that this house can't be blue? And, you know, that was the phase in the early 90s when everything was Wedgwood blue. Well, the house is brick and beige now, so that's another <laughs> story as well. But where I'm going with this story is, is that the house issue is really big. Because here again is... The, is is the founder and the spouse not agreeing because he was born there, raised there, grew up there possibly. And I, and our farm is matriarchal. So our farm is through Wes's mom. So it's not always through, through the father. Anyway, she is like so ready to downsize, get something easier to clean with no stairs. He, on the other hand is, ah, no, it's great. If I live here, then I can close the bins when it rains. And you know, during calving, I don't have far to go for a night check. Oh, newsflash, dad, you're not doing night checks anymore. So why do you have to live close by? So do you see, Tracy, like the house thing is a really big deal because the home yard is also very emotional, right? Mm -hmm. And so let's talk about, let's talk for a minute just about pushback. Pushback for how these decisions made either comes from the head, which is I don't understand rental agreements or I don't understand shareholder agreements and I don't understand butterflying a corporation or maybe we shouldn't do that. Maybe we should just have a joint venture with two holding companies and all this sort of structure speak that your tax and your accountant is going to help you out with. So it can come on your head, but a lot of resistance that I work with comes from the heart and the heart resistance is I don't like how this feels. And then you go down one level lower to your gut where your intentions lie and you can just say, I don't trust him. I just don't trust him or her. 
And, you know, if you're going to start from a level of mistrust right at the beginning, you're going to have a really bumpy road for succession planning and transition planning because you have to trust that there is no intention to cause harm, but you trust that the intention is for everybody in the family to actually get what they want. So it's win-win for Gen 1 and it's win-win for Gen 2. I love it. That's great advice. Great advice. So there's just so much there, Elaine. I'm trying to think even where I want to go next. So I want to step back and just kind of put it in order for my mind. So let's say I am, I am the founder right now. And I always say that I am old enough, old enough to understand the feelings of the founder because we've actually founded our farm and all those thoughts of one day having to move out of my home and give up control. We don't even have children, but just those thoughts, you know, they kind of do something to me, right? Because we're proud. We've built, we've built our farm. You put so much into it and then wanting to, wanting to, or having to step away just goes against our counterintuitive independent nature, right? So I think, like you said, clarity. Realistically, as farmers, founders, we do need to retire at some point, retire. And what do we want to happen with the farm, right? We probably want the farm to carry on. And if we do want it to carry on, we should probably plan and think of some of these things, right? Well, and again, that goes back to what the family truly believes to be their core values, Tracy. I actually have a higher value for relationship than I do for wealth. And there was a very interesting article that FCC put out about an um, Asadel sheep farm in Ontario where the, the successors were not family. And the vendor was a very wise man, and I love what he said. He said, my family is my legacy, not my farm. So he was, he was able to separate very clearly that this was number one to him. His family was number one, and his farm business had succeeded, but he had groomed an interested party who was not family to be part of the, of the legacy of that business. And so there and again, you see, we don't make assumptions, right, about what, what you want your true uh, legacy to be. And in a lot of families, it can be both. It can be a, a rich family, rich in relationship, and a profitable farm with family members all working together uh, in family business. But I, I also um, wanted to just talk about clarity of vision, because that's the other pushback. So, you know, what would be wise for the founders to do? And this is what they come to me and say, Elaine, I know we're supposed to do this transition planning thing, but you know what? I'm still not convinced that the next generation really wants it. And I said, okay, why don't you ask them to give you a business plan and tell them what their vision is? Yes. Love and it. you see, yeah, well, let's put some, you know, we can talk about airy fairy things till the cows come home, but it's really helpful when you actually put things down on paper and you can attack the issues on the paper. So the other thing is it, that, is important about building the team of advisors and then the communication piece is when I send a founder and their spouse to a financial planner and they come back and they say, Oh, Elaine, we don't have enough money to do what we want to do. I go, Oh, so how much do you want your children to buy? Oh, no, no, no. We don't do it that way in our family. Well, kind of you do now, sir, because you're forced to, because your dream of just rolling things down to the next generation, like your grandfather and like your father and like your great grandfather or your grandmother, whoever that, and here's another phrase that pays that was then. And this is now. And so things change Tracy. And you know, my heart goes out to the people in Northern Alberta. I'm working with families in Alberta right now who are just like, they're in year five of it not being good. Like this is number five tough year. And then, of course, the flooding that we've had, you experienced and the flooding that uh, people in Minnedosa Rivers, that part of Manitoba, like, you know, even Ron Cron, I've been watching him on Twitter, and he's, you know, hi, Ron. He, he's got, you know, his, his peas look really awful, right, because they don't like to have wet feet. So there's just all kinds of risk that's always going to be there. So 
don't, don't assume that your vision is going to be the way you thought it was the first time is what I'm saying. And that's why these advisors can help be your reality check as to whether or not that's really going to be true. And, and then the other part about communication that I think would be helpful is dad, mom, do you remember what it felt like when you first started to own a piece of this farm? And for a lot of men that I coach, Tracy, they've been the owners since like 27. Like they got the farms at a very young age in my, in my world. And then you'll, then you'll have them, well, yeah, Lane, but I really like owning stuff. <laughs> and I go, well, that's good. But are there, are there certain little pieces of, of a quarter section or some equipment or things that you might just sort of start wanting to share the equity on? Because herein lies the problem. For young farmers to go to FCC or the credit union or the bank of choice, they need to have collateral. They need to have equity to leverage more equity. So they can't go in there with absolutely nothing. But again, that would be an assumption. So we'll talk about that in Gen 2, what to do about finding more money. Okay, I love that. So mindset, explore, communicate, communicate, communicate. Can I say that five more times? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. That's fine. I won't. I think we got the point. That's okay. Communication. That's okay. So that is all great. Now we come to the point where we actually need to act. If we clarify what we want, we think about what we want, we communicate what we want. Now, as founders of the farm, we need to act. You want to right. touch on that? So I, when I'm speaking at live events, I often say talk does not cook rice, right? We can talk. People can watch all the Impact Farm videos. Sorry, Tracy. You know, I love your videos, obviously, <laughs> and there's lots of great ideas. But we can have all these great ideas washing over us and then do absolutely nothing, right? So my practical tool in this segment in, in terms of getting things done is I want farm families to go into their desks and their offices and find a binder. Find something that they can repurpose. And I wanted to have eight tabs. And the tabs would be business plan, lifestyle plan, i.e. financial planner, lawyers, wills and estates, a plan for where their debt servicing is, and then also their coaching and communication and their family meetings. So just a way, it's a, it's a planning binder. And, it, and a lot of women, particularly who love to organize, are much neater than I am. They look, oh, great, they get to make a binder. But you make the binder, but it's a place to collect all of this information. And it's also a way to chunk this down. Because remember I said earlier on that many farmers don't get started in doing the work of transition planning because they feel overwhelmed. Their brain is going like this and they say, Elaine, just tell me, where do I start? So the first place I want people to start in acting is with themselves. Sit down with a journal, a blank piece of paper. I don't care. My husband did it like in six words. Where do you want to live? Wherever Elaine lives. Oh, oh was that? yeah. We just Aww. celebrated our 39th anniversary. So that was a good thing. So Staying, good. Married. Staying married is also a good succession plan. Mm -hmm. um, number two is, uh, so where do you want to live? How much money do you need? He said 120,000. And he said, and then the third question is, um, what does a good day look like to you on the farm? And my husband said, to work when I want to and not have to start trucks at minus 42. My son can do that. Okay, so he okay. still wants an active role, but he's very tired by, by 8, 9 o'clock at night. And he doesn't want to work 100-hour weeks anymore. So what I'm saying, Tracy, is having a clear sense of your own self of what you want and then, then joining together and having that conversation with your spouse because I have sat with 72-year-old men who are happy to go putzing and puttering in their shop. And the woman is saying to me, Elaine, I just want to move to Winnipeg and go to Bible studies and go be, be in my quilting club and be closer to my grandkids. And then I look at him and I say, when is it her turn to get what she wants? Mm. And he looks at me and he says, Elaine, you are so fired. I thought he was going to say, you're so right, Elaine. <gasps> no, 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 no. It fires me, right? Because I asked, I asked him, 
when is it her turn to get what she wants? Because she's been here in Grand Central Station on the farm for 45, 50 years. She's 72 years old. So she likely got married at 20. She's been there for a while, right? Or 22. And therein lies the problem, Tracy, is that you, you won't let go of things. You won't move off the farm. You won't leave and do other things unless that other thing is more appealing and attractive than what you're already currently in. And that's where men and women usually butt heads because she's ready to move into relationship, family, fun, different kinds of roles, maybe charity, working at the MCC thrift store, doing quilting, um, not having to worry if it's going to rain, freeze, hail, or whatever on the crop, although she probably still will because she's you know, intimately connected to agriculture. But my point is, is that when the founder and the spouses don't agree, you have to start there first. And that's why there may be a total burnout and a sideswipe of anything getting done if the two spouses don't agree. The other issue that we haven't even touched on yet is there are cases in Canada where on these 195,000 farms where there's more than one Gen 1. There's two brothers. Okay that are both Gen 1, right? right? And of course, these two brothers don't see eye to eye. And so they're going like this. And maybe one of these brothers is married and one of these brothers is the traditional bachelor. And so he has a totally different vision for the future than the one over here. And, and, and again, when I get brothers farming together, and we can talk about this more with Gen 2, I always want from the very beginning of the succession plan, a way to separate them so that they have either holding companies or a joint venture or some shareholder agreement where it's very clear that after 10 years or 15 years or 20 years farming together, there's an easy way for them to go into their own individual operations. And so for anyone watching this video who has a brother or a sister that they're farming with and it's becoming difficult, it's, it's even more important that you have um, that communication. The other thing is I want you to also practice good self-care because this can get really tiring. And so that's why the binder helps chunk it down into smaller pieces. And I want you to also just have some healthy boundaries because here's the other thing I see happening. You know the price of land has kind of been going up and up and up for the last 30 years, right? Mm -hmm. So... When are we going to do the video on greed? Oh, boy. Yeah, that would be an exciting video. I think that would probably be my most popular episode. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and we're laughing, but it's not that funny. No, because it's we not. know, No, we know that the vision is typically to keep the farm intact, which means the farm land, and that there's a lot of fighting over the farmland. And I'm just gonna put my, my little chart up again here, just as a reminder. That would be the fairness piece. And so fairness is, uh, in my world, what is it that you do as a founder to help everyone in the family be successful? Every child is gonna be different. Some are savers, some are spenders. Um, you will have Gen 2 who will come to Gen 1 and say, mom and dad, you've worked so hard. I just want you to have a decent life. Could you please just have some fun? And, and so they don't expect anything other than that their parents would have a decent life. And people, as you know, are living longer, right? So it's really important to, to set healthy boundaries around those expectations in the family circle, in the business circle, and in the wealth circle. And, what, and what's expected. And just as a side note, I have a really good fairness video on my YouTube channel at Farm Family Coach that is really worth a watch because that I think is another thing that Gen 1 is really afraid of because what promises have they made secretly or quietly to the child who's not launching or not thriving or needs more help? And does the farming heir know about that? And are they expected to carry on that tradition when Gen 1 is gone? So I'm, I'm a big believer, Tracy, in no secrets. And I'm also a big believer in empathy and putting yourself in the other person's shoes. So do you remember what it felt like when you first owned something on your farm? And can you imagine what that would feel like for Gen 2 to have this transition process of shifting equity over and shifting management over 
so that your farm can continue the, the, the wonderful success that it's had in the past. Love it. Elaine, you know, and I'm sure everybody watching this episode is doing the same thing that I'm doing, going, oh, I know that person. Oh, that. And I'm not going to be confidential and not name names or whoever, but I'm going through that and thinking of different circumstances in my life, very close to me, where the founders had good intentions on their own. I don't think the conversations were had, the knowledge, whatever the case was, they wanted the farm to carry on, but they didn't want to leave. They didn't want to give up control. There was no communication. And guess what happened to both that farm and that family? Yeah, fragmented family, fragmented farm, right? Yeah. And my hashtag on Twitter, Tracy, is hashtag healing stories number four egg. And I just want to encourage people you know, we're doing this now by Zoom because this is the reality of uh, the great pause. Um, I'm now a certified virtual presenter, and I spoke to a credit union rep this week. They have 10,000 members. And again, if you're on a board or an association and you're thinking, wow, we could really use this message, well, we have the forum for doing that, right? And, and we're doing these videos now on Zoom. This is exactly how I do my coaching. So there's no excuse for people not to reach out to their advisor of choice and have these conversations and start putting all the pieces together. And the other thing I want viewers to understand is I am in exactly the same position as you are. I am a founder now. My parents are deceased. My in-laws are deceased. I'm on my third transition plan. I did one in 1992 with my in-laws, which was beautiful. They, they transitioned land to Wes's sisters. They were very wise. They came to this country in 1926 with a suitcase. They built up a farm. They built up some wealth. But they were wise to start giving gifts with a warm hand. So Wes's sisters were in their 30s when they inherited a $67,000 quarter. And of course, they sold it to us which was great, right? Because then they got something to help them when they actually needed it. And we got the right to keep the farm intact. So there's no one right way of doing it. But what people have to have is that mindset of let's not prejudge the outcome. Let's be kind and respectful to everyone. And let's keep talking, but also not talking. Let's keep listening for understanding and intent and clarity of expectation. Because it, it's a beautiful thing. My other family succession story happened in 1998 when my mother dropped dead six weeks after our meeting with the accountant. And the accountant was shocked. Well, we all were. She had an asthma attack and she died. And, and so, right. And so people say, Elaine, why, why are you so passionate about what you do? It's because I buried my sister when she was 23. I buried my mother when she was 65. I buried my father in 2011 with Alzheimer's. All the things I write about, I've had a lot of experience of going through those bumps, and I just want to help people discover that it doesn't have to be that hard. So quit telling yourself it's hard. Start taking the first step. Get the binder organized pick up the phone, start making appointments with a financial planner, make sure your will, you have a will. Oh, I can't make the will, Elaine, because uh, we don't have a succession plan done. Yeah. Stop it. You need a basic will. And basic is better than nada. And, you know, again, as you were just speaking, Tracy, this woman I was speaking to uh, that works in wealth management, she said, Elaine, you know, people always think the younger are going to die second. Well, that didn't happen in this case and the successor died before the grandmother did and so things skipped around the guy who'd put all the energy and work in the farm and now the grandson is going how am I ever going to fight with my aunts to buy back farmland that should have been mine in the first place sure. and those are the stories that need to stop now so you're listening to impact farming you can go to uh, my website farmfamilycoach.com Get my audio book. I know you don't have time to read, so I spent a lot of money putting it on audio. And I just want you to just take the next step and be curious. Don't go, you know, angry on each other. Just say, you know, Dad, you're looking kind of tired. And this is Gen 1 talking to his father because we didn't talk about, Tracy, about grandfathers. Mm. But in Alberta, 
let me tell you, those of you in Alberta, hello. I love Alberta. People there are wonderful. Been there a lot. But in Alberta, there's a lot of grandfathers that still own land and a lot of grandmothers because there tends to be a culture in Alberta of the heritage ranch, the heritage farm, and people love to hang on to land because it's the best form of investment for them. Well, yes, you can do that, but you don't have to hang on to all of it. And there, there can be a plan for it to transition uh, gradually. And there again would be another mindset shift. In agriculture, it's not black and white. It's not all or nothing. And you know, I can start dancing for you. It's called the polarity. And a polarity means something that we have to manage. And what we have to manage when we talk about transition planning is that we plan and then we act. We plan some more, and we act some more. So Tracy, I am in a transition journey. I am 63 years old. I have a 32 year old successor. And my succession plan will be done when I die because it's always going to be changing, right? The businesses change, um, but our income streams are protected. I have a financial planner. I have an investment broker. My financial planner told me that I am good till I'm 102. So we'll be doing this, Tracy, for quite a while. Good. <laughs> I have many more episodes Just for you. <laughs> Yeah, 20 more years. Oh, I don't know if they're ready for that. No, no, I'm holding you to that, Elaine. I'll book you okay. out for the next X many years. <laughs> okay, that'll, that'll be great. You know, that is so important. And you said, why do you do this? And same thing, me. Why did I start this show? I started this show for reasons near and dear to my heart, seeing families split up that don't talk to each other, aunts, uncles, right. cousins, it's not pretty. And, you know, every single one in the audience, if they farm, know of one, two, three, five, six different families, if not their own, where there is a terrible tale. And, you know, I like to say maybe some generations didn't have the information and tools that we do in this, right. in this generation, right? I mean, we have the internet, we have Audible and books galore and farm coaches you know, I'll give my grandfather and that generation a little bit of grace because they don't quite have the tools that we do. They're here now. So the onus is on us that have all the information at our fingertips to do it right so that we keep our family in place. And if the farm is that important, let's just do it right and make sure we plan and the farm continues on, right? That's what I'm passionate about. So, and at the end of the day, though, to Tracy, you know, my, my value system is I want to be rich towards God and rich in relationship because I've buried my sister at age 23. And it's really clear to me that we're not taking any of it with us. So let's put it in the right spot for the right person at the right time. And let's have the joy of being thanked and appreciated. And let's have the joy of seeing things grow and thing, seeing things uh, take care of the interests of others, not only our, our own interests. So really appreciate the time with you today. And again, all folks have to do is Google farmfamilycoach.com and I have tons of resources. Anything that I've mentioned here today that would be helpful to them, just reach out, send me an email and I'd be more than happy to share it. You know, Elaine, I want, I'm big on the action, and I know you had a big section on act, act, act. When you were sharing all your wisdom, I picked out four main thoughts and actions that founders should think on. Do you mind if I summarize? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do that. It's you gave a lot of good stuff there, but I'm going, okay, there's really four main things. So to me is, what do you want as the founder? Think about that. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. And I think some of those founders get scared because they feel like there won't be a role. If you love being on the combine, be the combine driver. So what do you want? What's actually important? You don't have to have it all. You can have your best part, like you said, right? And then to me, I look at some different farm families and I think one of the things that mess people up is the income stream. Well, yes. if I sell the farm, I don't know what I'm going to live on. So I'm not going to talk about this. And I think that is the second one that trips the founders up. And then the home yard, that's a big decision. And then fairness. To me, I picked those four points out. What do you want? What's your income going to 
income stream going to be when you retire? And where is what it coming from? What to the home farm? And mm -hmm. what was the other one? Fairness. Fairness. Yeah. There we go. Is that right? Those four. No, that, that's, that's perfect, Tracy. And again, you know, every, every farm is different and this is not a cookie cutter solution, which is why it's so important that like you build a solid, a solid team of advisors. I, I also say to people, farmers, especially crop growers, this is not roundup. You know, they want a quick fix. I have, I've had farmers who say, Elaine, send me your checklist for succession and transition planning. I said, I have one. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. Check, check, check. <laughs> no, but you've, high, you've highlighted the main point. So, you know, my, my encouragement is to remember it's your farm, it's your family, it's your choice. Do so you get to choose, are you going to act or are you just going to keep sitting back and letting the whole season of the farm go by and then you wake up and you come back and you go, oh my goodness, Elaine, we called you two years ago. I go, yes, you did. I said, why are you calling me today? Well, they're calling me today, Tracy, because something has significantly shifted as a tipping point for them to take action. And I don't want people to be forced into action. I want them to choose to take action because then they'll have a much more measured and, and, and uh, happier experience, I think, going down their succession transition journey. So it's just really important not to keep putting it off. I want to give a call out to you and other farm coaches because sometimes I find as a female, a female or male, sometimes we get stuck in our own bubble and we only have the knowledge that is in our heads and then we can't find the answer so we chase ourselves around and we, we just can't come up with anything so then we put it off and that's where I see the value. Let's say I'm a founder, 70 years old, 50 years old, whatever the case is, and I'm thinking of the next steps, would it not be a good thing for me to pick up the phone or do a Zoom with somebody like you, Elaine, and go, okay, here's my situation, and then just do that verbal dump and go, yeah. I'm not sure about this. This is what we're at. How can I start thinking about this? And again, just then Elaine goes, hey, and then you go, okay, and then you start to make a step because you have new knowledge. Is that how farm coaching would go. Well, and, that's, and that's why we have CAFA, Tracy. So the Canadian Association of Farm Advisors is all across Canada. And if you go on the website at cafanet.com, you can find an advisor for whatever province you're sitting in. But I have colleagues in every province across Canada of advisors that I trust and I like their work. And so I'm also a connector. So often people will call me, give me a 20-minute, um, a you know, snapshot of where they're at and then I suggest people that they can get connected to so that's just really important because not everybody is, is a good fit for everybody and the chemistry has to be right but it also has to get done amen okay perfect so on that note if people want to learn more about your work your books your course coaching where can they find out more about you and connect just just go to farmfamilycoach.com and if they'd like to send me an email, just go to my contact page. I also would really suggest that they sign up for my blog because it's coming out quite uh, regularly and lots of good information there too that might tweak some other resources that they can handle. Excellent. Just reach out. And also YouTube, Farm Family Coach. Just go to youtube.com and Google Farm Family Coach. And if, if they did one thing from this presentation today, I'd really like them to sit down and watch the fairness video because I think it's going to rock a few chairs. Mm, I like it. I have seen that one. I should do a refresher. Thank okay. you so much, Elaine, for the work you do. You are a pillar of the agriculture community and we are so grateful to have you on the show and as a champion and coach in our industry. So thank you for joining us again, Elaine. Thanks. Just get her done. I love it. And thank you for joining us. If you love this episode, and I'm sure you did, like it, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and share it out so other farmers can benefit from Elaine's wisdom. Thank you, and see you on the next episode. Bye. You've been listening to Impact Farming. For more great episodes and articles designed to help you manage and grow your farming operation, head on over to farmmarketer.com. Don't forget to sign up while you're there. We will see you on the next episode.